Hello. Hello. And welcome to video eight of our video diary. Uh, today we come to you from the prestigious Magic Circle. So this is our, our library. Well, this is a very small part of our library. Uh, there's a, an enormous wealth of information in all of the books that you can see behind us. And as members, we get to come to the Magic Circle and research in the books. Um, and it's a fantastic resource. And we thought it would be great for Pip and Paul. Yeah, so we've been doing a little digging today. We're, we're looking at how we can end our show spectacularly. Uh, we have two really good options, I think. I think so. Well, and we, we shall talk about them a little bit more once we sort of decide or narrow it down to one. We don't want people to get excited about one of them and then decide on the other one. Uh, we also have a really good idea about a behind the scenes video uh, showing a little bit, not giving away the secret as such, but showing a little bit about what happens in, if we're going to use that illusion, then what happens sort of around the side a little bit behind. So uh, that's exciting. If you can hear an announcement in the background, it's because um, we're actually, we've, we've just been performing here um, and the audience is being called upstairs to a theatre show. So. so this is one of the public shows that the Magic Circle put on called the At Homes. And people come along, they see close-up magic, they get to look around the museum and all of the uh, exhibits, and then they go upstairs to see a stage show, and that is what they're just announcing now, the stage show. So Paul and I were both um, asked by the Magic Circle to come and entertain during the close-up. So we've now done that bit, and we thought this would be a perfect opportunity to show you the building, a little bit of the building, and also to do one of our videos. Yeah, so we'll do a little walk around in a minute and show you some of the uh, exciting bits around the building. Um, but I wanted to use the day to get into a little bit more detail because I, I realise that uh, seven videos in, you're really not a lot wiser about what, what we're doing with the show and where we're going. So uh, It does show that we're thinking through the process though. It's, I mean, it's not just something you yeah. wake up one day and say, right, I'm going to do a comedy act and by the end of the day, there it is. Um, but we are thinking it through very carefully make sure that we get it right basically. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, interestingly, we're obviously working towards our first gig, which is November the 20th. Uh, we've seen a picture of the stage that we're going to be working on there and it's not as we were, have, it's not the stage we've been working towards performing on. So we It's a lot smaller. It's a lot smaller, yeah. So we're going to have to do a bit of tweaking on that. Um, we do have space in front of the stage though. Okay. The, the tables will be moved back so it'll be a little bit like a, like a dance floor area in front so that will help yeah um i particularly wanted to get today into a little bit about of the shape of the show um we we have a, a pretty spectacular ending um depending on which effect we go with but but either of those is going to be uh really hard hitting and large so uh uh looking at how we're gonna top and tail we also have an effect that kind of travels from the beginning of the show through to the end. Um, it's going to be a prediction type effect, so there will be in play at the beginning of the show uh, an object that the audience member is going to look at and then... Look after. And look after, I apologise, thank you. It's going to look after and then as we go through the show various events will happen. A lot of them will be randomly chosen by the audience. Uh, when we get to the end, that audience member will open the, um, the thing they've been looking after and on it will have been written our prediction of, of what will have happened. And if we get it right, then hopefully that will all match things that did happen, um, assumingly random or appearingly random in the, in the show. Uh, so we need, when we come on, we need to set that up. Uh, we're also thinking of coming on and setting up um, our show with some very quick fire comedy and strong magic. So probably two, three minutes worth of... Yeah, so one of the things that you need to do, in our opinion, when you, when you do an act is to grab the audience attention and the way we've decided to do that is to come on do two three minutes worth of really strong magic that's uh, comedy as well but is, is in a very tightly packed time and do lots in that time so it's sort of a um, bit of a whirlwind of a start really and hopefully that will give everyone an idea of what we do and what we're going to be doing and it'll It'll encourage them to stay, basically. Yeah, so we're going for madcap, we're going for skill. We, we, we need to show that we can deliver what, what we say we can, but also funny. Um, 
So a little bit crazy, not quite what they're expecting. Hopefully make them laugh and also show, get them to be interested that, uh, that we're going to be able to deliver for the next 45 minutes or, or Because so. the sort of places we are, uh, well, some of the places that we are considering doing this would be holiday camps. And people have the option to do all sorts of things. They can go to the bar, they can go outside, they can go back to their room and play cards. So we need to make sure that we grab their attention and make them think, right, this is going to be good, we'll sit and watch the whole thing. So we've been researching lots of double acts, we've been researching lots of comedy, uh, quick fire acts. The, the cabaret circuit has been full of this sort of thing for a very long time. Uh, and actually it's been done very well. Um, there's, if you, if you, well, I'm, I'm sure you're very familiar with, with some of the double acts who've done this sort of thing before. Um, so it's, we absolutely don't want to copy. We absolutely want to be, be our own brand. So we're putting a, a lot of thought into, into this section. Um, in fact, I would say, most of my thoughts so far has been into this, this first two minutes, two, three minutes, whatever it's going to be. Uh, it may be time to music. I think we're going to do it time to music without much talking. Yeah. Um, without any talking. Yeah. Fact. Yeah, maybe some noises. Maybe some noises. <laughs> no talking. Uh, so one other thing that we um, have been considering is to do a trick in the act that has um, elements of improv. So improvisation. So... Uh, the sort of thing that we wouldn't know beforehand and we would ask the audience for suggestions as to, you know, what sort of style or what characters, what sort of situation, that sort of thing. Um, now, both Paul and I have been in theatre a long, long time and uh, we have have done lots of sort of um, working on, on acts and working on that uh, sort of stagecraft, but neither of us, I think I'm... And I think I'm right in saying has actually done an improv class. No, so I've I've done a lot of improvisation just based on uh, when I was an MC and you know an act didn't turn up and someone said, "Can you fill twenty minutes?" And as a magician, you get used <laughs> to doing that anyway. Yeah, you know, things sometimes don't go to plan, so you have to improvise and 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 still get a good ending out of it. And so. I was a stand-up comic for a while, and that involved talking to the to the audience and and going with whatever they said. But the sort of improvisation we're thinking about is. Uh, not knowing what trick we're going to do, so it could be a uh, linking rings, it could be a card trick, it could be whatever. Uh, getting a scenario, getting characters, getting something we're trying to do, and then making that work as a piece of entertainment across four or five minutes. So, in order to flex that muscle this week, well, it is it is a muscle you have to train. Yeah, it really is. So we've started improvisation classes. Yeah, we went to our first improvisation class last week, um, and it's the first improvisation class I've ever been to, and I think that's yeah, the no, same no, for yeah, you. yeah, same for me, absolutely. Um, fantastic group, though. We need oh, to say, say, you know, a shout out to them. To Ed, Ed ran. Um, uh, Ed, I apologise, I've forgotten your last name. We'll flash it on the screen now. Um, uh, you ran a great improv session. Um, I'll be going. To everyone from now on, but you're on holiday for Yeah, I've got a couple of weeks where I'm working in Spain, so um, I'm not going to be able to go for a couple of weeks. But uh, hopefully Paul will sort of fill me in on anything that he might have learnt there. But we so we're back. We had a bit of a technical glitch there. Um, the uh, the phone stopped stopped recording for some reason. Yeah, apologies. Yes, yeah, so we're going to have to go back and sort of repeat some of the things that we've already said. So please bear with us. We need to try and remember those. <laughs> um, but basically, we were talking about uh, the um, the improv class, and it proved to me that we can both do it, which which is very important because neither of us had done it before. So uh, I'm very pleased with with the fact that we weren't we didn't appear to be out of our depth when we were there, which was good. So uh, we need to obviously hone that muscle, that skill, and uh, that's what we're hoping Ed and his class will do, and I'm pretty sure he will. So thank you, Ed. Good job. Big thumbs up from us. Thank you. Um, so you're away for two weeks? So yeah. I'm working in Spain for a couple of weeks, which is going to make um, recording our videos quite difficult. But uh, maybe we'll see what we can do. Maybe I'll film somewhere I am and you can film somewhere you are. You by the pool with your margarita. And, and, your... and you in the rain. That would be great if you can have the, just the rain coming down behind you. I'll do what I can. Perfect. Uh, so we have another shout out. Yes, absolutely. Um, Brendan. Brendan Rodriguez, uh, we're big fans of yours, and it's just, it's thrilling to hear that you're big fans of us. So Brendan tells us he's watched every video. Yeah, says he's our number one fan, Yeah, they all is say great. That. They all say that. They do, yeah. We should have a fan off at well, some we... point. 
<laughs> yeah, send us in your fan videos, okay? We'll find out who's, who the biggest fan is. So we were here last night uh, at our weekly meeting for the Magic Circle and uh, Brendan came over and said, loving the video, really good. Uh, and, it, and, and he didn't have long to watch it, to be fair, because it only went out on Sunday. We were quite late this time around, as you know, because we were doing the video um, later in the week because of the competition. And he came over and he said he was loving it. So thank you, Brendan. Um, really, really talented guy. I'm really makes you sick. To so be he's he's a, he's a incredible magician. Um, he's a contact juggler. The ball thing. You know, when you balance the balls in your hands, do it, at all, um, but it looks brilliant. You know. Uh, but it takes that takes amazing dedication. It does. And he's a cocktail. What do they call them? Cocktail. Th uh, bar flower. Bar so flare. so if you've ever seen Cocktail, the film with Tom Cruise, when they're throwing the the bottles in the air and making the drinks and doing all this around the back, that's called bar flare. And he's award winning. At that. He's actually award winning. Yeah. So Brendan, great, really good. Yeah, it's good to have you on board for the journey, mate. Yeah. Um, it's not talking about anyway. He's far too talented. As they all are. Everyone we've given a shout out to. But this is nice because we're surrounding ourselves with our friends and people who are very talented. And I always think yeah. if you surround yourself with people who are good and people that you look up to, you're going to end up working even harder to try and get to, to their up. level, yeah, which I think is up. great. Uh, yeah, you're right. That is good. That is good. Um, OK, I think we're going to finish now. If you're listening to this um, on the podcast, the audio podcast, this next bits will probably cut. <laughs> it won't make a lot of difference. I'll try and, um, I promise you some extra audio for all of those. Obviously, we haven't backdated that, but from now on, we'll do that, and I'll think of something on the way home. And for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, you can listen to the podcast, not watch them, but we've taken the audio part and made it into a podcast, which you can find on iTunes, which is Pip and Paul. So just do a search on iTunes for Pip and Paul. Plus... Um, we're now uh, on Stitcher, Stitcher Radio, Radio and have as well. Awesome. Stitcher Radio. So do a search for us on Stitcher Radio as well if that's your preferred way of listening to podcasts. Perfect. Otherwise, Subscribe, as always, just here. Social media down here. Please join in the conversation. We'd love to hear what you think. And we're going to sign off now and then take you on a quick tour with some photos or videos of the Magic Circle building itself. In fact, all the public here that are watching the show aren't actually allowed in this room. This is the library. They're not allowed in here. So you're getting to see something that you, you so shouldn't you're not really, really meant to be seeing. So, so shh. No looking around the background, just <laughs> look at us. Okay. Yeah. Why wouldn't they? Why, Why wouldn't they really us? Yeah. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. So, as always, it's goodbye from Pip. It's goodbye from Paul. Goodbye. Bye.